Stick around. In the book club. Starting now. <laughs> I was like, don't go anywhere. What do you mean? <laughs> I, it was for video purposes, right? <laughs> All right, you guys. And welcome to book club. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know what to do with my hands. I can eat you, right? I don't know if you know the movie. <laughs> Ashley does. Ricky Bobby. Uh-huh. How's the waiting room? Should, you need any co-host or anything? Yeah, I'm uh, definitely. Yes, we do. I, was, I did not set that up. Do it. Again, having issues. Yeah, so welcome, guys. As you guys are coming in, we are just about ready to jump into book club. Let's see how many people we have in here. We may, uh, Cindy will probably set that up, the uh, break up, breakout, not breakout groups, breakout groups. Um, I'm going to set it up? I don't know. I can do it. Oh. I, I'm sure I'll mess it up, but we can <laughs> still help. do it. We'll do it um, yeah. Um, I don't think I ha- have questions. Gosh darn it. I didn't set it up. Maybe we should just keep them all in here. Yeah. How many are we? Only 30. <laughs> Only 30. New year. Let's stay together. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. We'll kick off the yeah, new year. Together. Yeah. All right. So we jumped into element uh, six. I know we've had a little bit of a break because we had Christmas party two weeks ago, then nothing, and then now we're into element six. So, um, which, by the way, you guys, um, real quick, Andrew's flipping really loudly. <laughs> is Andrew's going to throw up in the banner of optimal health journey um, the dates and the chapters or elements we're going to be on? So, for those of you that are like, "Oh my gosh, I don't know what chapter we're going to be on." Go to the Optimal Health Journey page. It'll be at the top. Um, the book club dates and times are on there right now, minus Outdated. the actual chapters. So we'll make sure we include that so you guys always know um, what chapter we'll be on and what book we'll be in. Yeah. Yeah. So that way you don't have to f- fly through the pages to, or, you know, to figure out where we're at. Um, and usually I only give the announcements in the day of. So cool. So element six, your path to healthy weight. Um it, it takes about a week or so to get through this element, accordingly, according to this guy. He's, but in this element, we're, uh, we're going to talk about setting a goal to help you reach your healthy weight as part of a lifelong transformation. Explore the phases of weight management and determine where you are and to learn new habits to begin creating a healthy weight. Now, there's a lot of great information here. Who wants to kick us off with some like major takeaways before we get into like the, the nitty-gritty questions? I've got stuff highlighted, so I'll go. We like awkward silence until someone's changed. No, actually, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I know Andrew does. Ashley's we're going we're gonna to make him practice right now. <laughs> I don't like awkward silence, so I'm going to start talking. You know, that's just, just the way it goes. I'm the, I'm the one question. that everybody goes, oh, my God, she's talking again. Please tell her to shut up. That's me. Just no, you're not. I can't do the silence thing. I can't, you guys. It's terrible. <laughs> I like to pretend that I can, but I really can't. Okay, so I'm going to kick us off because – go ahead, Erica. Are we still doing the raffle? I just needed to know so I could start the wheel. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought this was actually really funny to come in out of uh, all of the, <laughs> the health celebrations and everything that we had. Let's talk about our BMI, you know. I mean, <laughs> like, I hope everybody was – staying focused on their goals through this last um, couple weeks. But um, on page 153, I have it circled here. It says approximately 85% of people who go on a diet gain all of their weight and then some back within two years. The only habit that they ever create is the habit of dieting over and over and over. It is insanity. So, you know, I mean, I think even going into the beginning of a new year with diet mentalities all around us. Like, I think this is a a great opportunity if, if we're coaches or clients, you know, to really link arms with those people and get them out of that mindset. It's such a huge thing because I don't want to spend the next 30 something years of my life on a diet. I don't. We're making changes, right? So that was, that's my takeaway on that, on this beginning part. And now I'm going to pass it on to somebody else. All right. So on the page prior to that, at the bottom paragraph, like one of the last sentences ends with the words progressively skillful way. And that is so important for me because 
well, first of all, I don't want it to be progress. I want it to be right now. Like, I don't want to have to make progress anymore. I want it to all already have been made. <laughs> like I want to be 100% and never have to work on anything. Um, however, what I have noticed is like in the time that I've applied what I've learned in program, the, it, the, it, that is true. It's progressively skillful. Like little by little, the binges get shorter, the unhealthy relationship with food. I was telling Aaron earlier, I said, you know, at this point, my why is like, I'm a food addict. Like I can't stop eating food. That's my why. Not because I want to be a good example for my kids. Not because like I had an aunt literally die in the middle of the night because her body couldn't breathe anymore. I don't want that either, but those, that's emotional stuff for me. The truth is the truth is I'm a food addict and that's just not going to like go away. I'm addicted to other stuff in life too. And recovery a little over four, four and a half years from some other very addictive things. Um, and, and the truth is what helped me there too. And the truth is I'm a food addict. And the truth is if I don't change, I'm going to keep doing this forever and ever and or until my body can't heave my weight anymore while I'm breathing in the middle of the night. And I just suddenly do not wake up the next day. Um, that is still emotionally tied, but the, the truth is I'm a food addict and anything that has control over me, I put in the God spot and like, really, I only want God in the God spot. So I kind of got to take food out of there and this really slow progression of this unwell spirituality, like slowly and slowly and slowly, I'm turning to the right sources from the wrong sources. Um, and knowing that, yeah, it's, it's progress. It's not perfect. And it's not going to be perfect. It's just really annoying. Cause I want it to be, and I want it to be perfect right now, but like, fortunately I got a group of other people to hang out with for half an hour on Mondays and then throughout the week interspersed, um, who are also like, yeah, same sis. So that's good news for me too. Yeah. If anything, guys, like, and Dr. A talks about this, this book is to help you become self-aware. And I talk about this all the time. Like it's not the end all be all in every chapter that we read. You're going to read about the habit loop. Dr. A doesn't know everything about the habit loop. So I bought other books on the habit loop, right? Because I wanted to learn more about it. So food susceptibility. And it's like in the later chapters of uh, elements of this book, when it talks about that and food addiction, which uh, Katz has talked about, like, had he not talked about that, I would not have realized that I have a food addiction. And I, I, it's not a bad word. It's just really something I think that we need to get a hold of and go, gosh, maybe that's the reason why I can't stop and I'm not hungry, you know, and maybe habits are part of it, but also food addiction. So I love that uh, Kat saw that about herself. It's a lot of self-awareness that we're trying to get through here. Um, I love that. Um, well, cool. So let's, let's jump into some questions here. Um, and I got some for you. Um, what, what you guys, if you guys read this chapter, you should know, but what phase of the weight management phase are you guys in? What, who wants to, anybody want to share about that? Real I'm quick? in phase one. Phase one? <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> phase one is awesome. I think. I'm back in phase one again. Let's go. Yeah, no, this is crazy because like, so I had gone from originally starting almost two years ago on program and through that process COVID hit obviously I lost my job so I had to manipulate plan to fit my budget as well as become a health coach to try and help with that but at the same time being a parent that provides for not only my direct family with my husband and my children, but also my parents as well. It was very hard to sustain initially. So I wound up having to go back into the, the hygiene field and was finding jobs away from home on the road, going, 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 going. And I lost the weight that I was looking to lose almost completely. Um, but after that, I jumped back off track and I let the hygiene side kind of take a hold of my life. And I kind of let go of the wayside of being a coach and I let the food addiction come back in 
And so over the holidays, it was not fabulous. And so, yeah, I'm back in phase one on my weight loss phase again. And a lot of people are in a, in fact, I'm in, guess what? I'm in phase one again too. And, and I'm almost okay with that because I'm more concerned about what I'm learning. Because if I'm not learning anything through this and I really do treat it like a diet and I do yo-yo, then, then that's exactly what it is. But thank God for the materials here because I know that I'm learning about myself. And I don't really care how long it takes. I just need to keep learning and growing. So uh, I love that, Victoria. Thank you for sharing. I want to uh, say something. Sure. So when, when we talk about the different phases that we're in and how we go through learning all of these informations, you know, Andrew had said something when he was talking about like, there's more information besides what's in this book, but this book is basically a handwritten guide. That's going to get you directed to what your, what your need is. You know, I mean, I don't know. We had this conversation, Andrew, Cindy and I this morning about like, I kept going through the first phase of my weight loss journey and having reached my goal thinking what's wrong with me at the end. Like, why can't I keep doing this? Why can't I get to my goal? Why is this so difficult? What is wrong with me? And, uh, for me identifying that, yes, I have an addiction. I have a food, I have a sugar, I have a consumption addiction. Um, that was my identifier. And since then being able to fill my, my, myself with information and knowledge on what types of things I can identify as far as triggers, uh, you know, food triggers, not just food triggers, but also emotional triggers, environmental triggers, what around me is causing these things. You guys, that is like some serious, powerful stuff right there. And it is so amazing that we have that ability, but I think sometimes we get so stuck within this box. Like we have this little nice, tidy little box and we don't allow ourselves to go around and to look for more information you know, and I don't know if it's because of a comfort thing. Like I have this book and this book is going to give me all the information. No, you really ought to identify what your stuff is. I know, you know, other clients have sleep problems and that's been their hang up. Okay. Well let's go. This is a great source. We've identified it, but now we need more. We need to figure out more. Where can we get more information? You know, it's so available. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we we're aware of that that this is just, this is our guide. Yes. And it has so much good information. Our coaches have amazing information and can help us too, but it's our responsibility to go beyond that and figure out everything else that we need to make sure that we're reaching, you know, phase four. Who is in a different phase outside of phase one that is willing to share? Oh, Nikki, what phase are you in? I would say that I'm probably uh, moving into phase three. So, um, I've been able to kind of maintain that weight for quite a while, um, more than six months now. Um, I will say, I will full on admit during the holidays, there was absolutely um, things that came up that I um, partook in. I had some cookies and, you know, some things that I shouldn't, but, um, but again, I think it's what I've learned through this process and this program and understood about myself in how I could, you know, quickly just get back on track. It was like, okay, this is just a hiccup for a moment. I'm enjoying my life, but it's not forever. It doesn't feel good. I'm going to go back to what I know. And that's just what I have done. And so um, now my goal really is more about how do I get consistent around working out? How do I get consistent about actually building the muscle? Um, because I have learned to maintain the weight. Nikki, I add something there. Like, I know you said you're kind of not beating yourself up, but like, like this, we're not the food police by any means here. But for some folks, in, especially in Nikki's position where she's, she's, in, she's, she's in optimization, right? And, and maybe Nikki doesn't have triggers to where the cookie's going to set her off into a three month spiral. Nikki can have the cookies. It's okay to have the cookies. It's it's for for folks who, like Misty and myself and maybe Kat that are hyper aware, like, no, I know if I had that cookie, I'll be in a coma of sugar for the next three months. And that's the people who can't have the cookie. 
So no cookie for me, but Nikki can have the cookie. Okay. So, so that's why I want to say like, you don't got to beat yourself up. There are folks that are on their journey that can still partake of that and they know it's not going to spiral out of control. So thank you for sharing that, Nikki. That's huge. Yeah, sure. I just want to jump in really fast too, because he doesn't talk about it in element six, but Dr. A is very, very clear and specific about the fact that gaining weight back is not a reflection of poor performance. It is not a reflection of failing on program. It is not a backslide. It is simply a reminder that we need to look outside of food to what else is happening in our life Mm -hmm. and the rest of the macro habits and figure out where we've let that structural tension go. And if we need to focus on our sleep, if we need to be drinking more water, if we need to be moving more, because food is the byproduct of those things. Because if we're too hung up on how much we weigh or the fact that we are a failure if we're attached to that number, that's a diet. And being healthy is taking the time to acknowledge that a symptom of something that's unhealthy in our life is creeping back in. And taking control of those other things initially will lead us back into the control of the food. And I'm like shaking right now because it's like, it is so important that we don't lose sight of that because like... I was talking to my mentor coaches about it today. Performance-based expectation is the root of all evil and it will choke you from the inside out. And like, it's okay. (laughs) We can go from phase four all the way well past, like I needed phase one six months ago and still be just fine. Like hopefully we recognize sooner (laughs) that we have outside things that are happening. But just like every other addiction, usually the addictive source is the compensation and the avoidance and the coping for those external things that are triggering it. And so if if you are in phase one, if you went pre-phase one, <laughs> if you make it to phase four and you go back, like you're still okay. Like dig in into the rest of the goodness because it's not about getting skinny. It's about the health that comes from losing the weight. And it's about losing the inflammation and learning how to continually maintain those choices. Because the other part of addiction in reality and maintenance is that it doesn't matter how much you maintain a car. At a point, you need a new car. You can only patch a hole and fix it for so long. We have to continually progress, which means there will need to be new things. We are constantly going to have to work and Mm. in recovery if you're not working on your recovery you're working on a relapse and it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be in a corner drunk or shooting dope again but you are going to perpetuate the addictive personalities and negative connotations that you used to project emotionally physically lack of motivation etc so Mm. on this journey too like it's okay (laughs) You have to keep working at it. You can, phase four is still going to require work. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lifelong journey. It's in. in (laughs) No, no. Thank you so much. One of the questions for, um, sorry guys. I don't even know if I can see my screen now. Um, Why is habit installation, why should that be your focus uh, versus using willpower? That's uh, kind of what everybody's dancing around here. And I love it. All these conversations is that, you know, we have the action that needs to be taken and we can take action with quote willpower or whatever. But what the program's all about a hundred percent is the habits that we build because the habits carry us. I mean, everybody on here, guys, if we had the right habits when we were young, we'd be rich right now. If we had the right habits when we were young, we would be thin or healthy right now. If we had the right habits, we'd be this kind of parent, this kind of spouse, this kind of anything. So when we're we're looking at the program and and preaching the choir here with all you guys, because you're showing up for book club and you understand that. Like everybody here, first of all, like 2022, amazing. You know, I'd love to see the potential 
of everybody on here that is here trying to work and do the stuff that's it's not always easy. But the habits are what build it. The habits are what carry us through. And when we look around, uh, uh, Meme st- used an analogy a minute ago. I love analogy. She talked about a car. I was going to talk about like a bicycle, like two kids living in two different places. You know, they're starting in a different terrain. They have a different bike. This parent wants uh, training wheels. This one doesn't. This one is a natural balance. This one doesn't. This one can practice 30 minutes a day. This one can ride for four hours a day. Like, it's not about comparison. But if each one of the kids sticks to it, guess what? At some point in the not too distant future, they're going to be an amazing, you know, they're going to be an excellent bike rider. So that's what I look at when I look around this room and when I look at myself, you know, forward, backward or whatever, it's not about comparing to this or that or, or any beating of uh, beating ourselves up, but it's just like Andrew said, am I learning something? And am I establishing a habit? Do I understand what I did, you know, maybe not great over the holiday and how am I going to prep for that next year or at the next holiday? Uh, rather than, you know, throwing in the towel or whatever. There's a lot of people probably not on this call today because they ate like crap over the holiday and they haven't pulled themselves out just yet. And and I wish they were here to look at all of us and just understand, like, it's okay. <laughs> let's just, let's get back on that bike. Let's pedal some more. Let's keep practicing and get to where we want. So long-winded, but yeah, habits, the action is going to get us there. We always say as coaches, eat the food, drink the water, you're going to lose the weight. But if you want to keep it off, that's right here. That's what all these lovely people are talking with us about every week. I love that. And I think that willpower, like if I could just tap into that, that is, it, it fails us. Like willpower is not the same as building habits. Willpower is what failed us all the rest of our health journey because we were banking our whole health journey on a wish and a dream and a hope. Like, I hope I'll get there. I want to be this, but you never really did any work to get there. So willpower is moot. Like it doesn't exist really. Like when it comes down to it, because if you're not working towards something and you're actually not instilling habits to change the way you think, act and do your life, then you're going to eat the cookies and you're going to keep eating the cookies and you're not going to keep, you know, getting yourself on track to phase three, four, five, like you're going to sit before even level like that first level, you're going to be just there unhealthy and obese without even taking that first step. Mm, I love that. And that's, you beat me to it, Ashley. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. It's willpower is fleeting. It goes away. Um, when you build a good habits or any habit, it, habits stick around. Clearly, if you're a smoker, that's a habit. Smoking, you, it's kind of hard to quit, right? People do it for a long time. I did it for 20 years. Um, thank goodness I don't do it anymore. But um, but yeah, the willpower is hard. It's really hard. So it's easier. Well, it's easier to to start building habits so that'll last you a long time. Um, Anyways, there, there's a book called uh, Atomic Habits. If you haven't read it yet and you are kind of uh, interested in learning about more about habits, I told you like Dr. A's books kind of got me to read other books about things. And he talks about identity-based habits. And, and there's two smokers. I haven't shared the story in a while, but there's, there's these two smokers and they're both trying to quit. And one's asked, hey, uh, you want a cigarette? And she, the person says, no, no, I, I'm trying to quit smoking. And the other person's asked, hey, you know, do you want a cigarette? And she says, no, I'm not a smoker. Now, they're both trying to quit smoking. One identifies as somebody who's trying to quit and one identifies as somebody who's not going to be a smoker anymore, right? And, and that's the way I kind of I internalize myself is like, who do I want to be? Like when I go to a restaurant, like do I want to be the guy that eats the four baskets of bread? No, I, I'm not that guy. I want, to, I want to go, no, I'm not that guy that does that anymore. I, I want to be that guy, right? So kind of think about as you're going along too is, you know, you've got all these different um, – uh, phases that we're going to, but who do you want to become through this? Because when it's all said down with all the habits and stuff, like who are we going to be at the end of this journey or, or, or when we get out of the weight loss phase and optimization, like who, who are we at that point? How do we, how do we view food? I'm still working on that. So this is like a question I ask myself that I, I, I fight with. Um, anyways. Okay. Two people that are trying to pipe in. Heidi had her had a hand up, and then Tony just uh, sent a message in group. Both of them would like to reflect. Heidi, did you want to still say something? Yes. Um, in element six, I mean, we're talking about habits and 
everything. And on page 163, I had this underlined and I had to just keep rereading it. And it's at the top where it says your focus will be on building health which is something you really want to create. And this motivates us each day, right? When we're focused. And I think sometimes we get overwhelmed um, at trying to whatever our goal is. And I think if we keep it in manageable, just keep it focused, what matters most, because it says when we feel a little better, a problem caused by emotional conflict will lose its energy and you will be much more likely to quit. So that's where, you know, kind of piggybacking off Eric and, and others, you know, it's not just a number on a scale, it's the habits, it's the focus, and it's those little tiny actions that we can make to help us make these lasting habits that will help us continue on that journey, even when we do have a bad day. And it's just being more present in focusing on on our health, better health. Not perfect at all sometimes, but that that little statement there really spoke to me because a lot of times we do have that emotional tie with food. And so sometimes we have to recognize it for when call it out when it needs to be called out to ourselves. (laughs) No, it's true. And what I love about that, Heidi, is that it says focus on health. We're not focusing on being skinny or being a size. Right or, you know, whatever that looks like, um, externally for someone, it really is about being Mm -hmm. and those risks that we, um, those health risks that we drop when we are at a healthy BMI, exactly all of that. But I think a lot of us focus on a scale or a size Mm -hmm. thinking that that's important and sure that may give us confidence, but that's not Mm -hmm. the end all of why we No. And memes hit some really good points too, about the, there could be other reasons that need to be looked at and maybe focused on in terms of small action steps, like, okay, I need to work on my sleep. I have MS. Fatigue is a big thing. So there's some things, you know, that if we know we need to focus on, maybe we need to go back to those and kind of fold it into some of our daily action plans. And that may help us um, not be so focused on the weight. And then it's like everything just kind of works in tandem over time get healthy absolutely tony um i know you wanted to you wanted to share something uh go and take yourself off mute and and wrap us up here yeah i just wanted to kind of reflect a little bit so you know 2021 kind of threw me a curveball that i wasn't expecting and then what it what it taught me was i need to ask for help first of all I'm, I'm human and I, I'm not going to be perfect. Bad. You know, I put on some weight and I was doing some unhealthy choices and I had a couple of people say, well, that's, that's grieving, grieving, simple, grieving weight. And I said, no, 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 that, no, no. I did, you know, our health is not only physical and weight, it's about our emotional well being. It's our habits. And so I had to dial back in because I was, you know, I was diving into my chocolate and my candy jar at work, you know, and saying, why am I doing this? You know? And so, um, and then reaching out and saying, I, you know, I'm struggling. I'm really emotionally just spent and I can't do it right now. Um, so I think it's realizing that we're not perfect and it's okay to ask for help because I'm not one to ask for help. I'm one that wants to be perfect and always try and strive and do everything. But I had to stop and stop, step back and take care of me and realize that no, I don't want to do the sympathy weight or the sympathy whatever they were calling. I'm like, no. And, and, and saying, you know, and when people are off me, like, you know, at Christmas off me candy, I'm like, no, I can't do that. I can't go back. I, I've worked too hard to lose that 116 pounds to go back. And my dad would not want me to see me do that because then that's, you know, I'm not first time in my entire adult life. I'm a cheat out. Never, ever. That's just remaining 20 pounds, but you know, realizing that you're not perfect and that you just, you have to dial back in and reflect and say, okay, what did, why, why did I do what I just did? And what can I do better next time? And always learning from it because life is all about learning. Um, and we, I always say that the day I stop learning is a day that I need to retire and just not do anything because I'm always for the day I die, I'm going to be learning. So that's kind of, you know, and life will always throw us curveballs and we'll have those unexpected moments when, you know, their sadness will creep in and, and how do we, how do we deal with that? 
I love that. Tony, thank you so much for sharing that. If you guys don't know Tony, she's had an amazing transformation. I got to see her in person uh, in August last year, and it was just phenomenal to see how far she's come in her health journey. I'll we'll definitely check that out. Now, um, I know we got to do the wheel here, so I'm going to go ahead and let, uh, um, God, my brain's Erica. exploding right now. I can't even think anymore. <laughs> Erica, take over the, uh, the wheel. All right. All right, can you see? All right, let's shuffle them up. Patty Johnson. Patty, all the time. Better is over here. Is this thing rigged? No, I'm just kidding. Patty needs to play the lottery. I should. Thank you very much. All right. Here we go. Nice job, Jennifer. A double win. Yay. Thank you. It's awesome. Awesome, you guys. Well, uh, you guys, 2022 is going to be our year. We're going to learn a lot about ourselves this year. Um, and I'm really honored to be on this journey with you guys. So uh, you guys have a great rest of your night and uh, have its health book next week. And I'll put it up on the top over there for you guys to check it out. All right, you guys. I'll see you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>